Let's have a word of prayer. We get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, we praise you, sir. And we have ears to hear. We open our ears. We open our eyes. We open our hearts and minds. And we thank you. We receive revelation from heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. While I was praying that, <laughs> the Lord brought, it just came up in me on the inside. I, I heard this, <laughs> this particular man, a very outstanding, very godly man. His mother said, don't be so open-minded that all your brains just fall out. <laughs> no, um, no, no, no. That's right. Amen. You know, he's opening it up to everything. You, Jesus said he, and he shouted it in, in a message he was preaching. Jesus is a preacher. And that's the reason preachers still get loud when they got something to say. Uh, he shouted, he cried out in the eighth chapter of Luke, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So we have our ears open today in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go now to the book of Matthew, Kelly, 18th chapter. We are talking about teaching our children. We are talking about when the world said, uh, when they were bringing the little children to them to have hands laid on them to be blessed. See, Jesus, Jesus preached and taught the blessing all the time. They'd never heard anything but the law. So they didn't know about blessing. Well, when they heard that, they wanted their, they wanted their children blessed. They wanted them prayed for. And it made the disciples irritated, and they rebuked them. Oh, and Je they said Jesus was very displeased. It angered him. Mm -hmm. Now, here in the, that's in Mark 10, where we read yesterday and the day before. Now, let's go over here in the 18th chapter, because there's something here we want to bring out. In the, um, you, you brought this out in verse 5, or verse 4, Whosoever shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck that he would drown in the depths of the sea. Now, verse 10, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. Now, to despise the, the, the word translated despise means to think little of or to, uh, or to really uh, put them in a vain place. And people kind of tend to put the idea of hatred towards it so they think, oh, that's not me. I don't hate a child. No, that's not what the it's, word means it, it's, not, <clears throat> it's not that. It's to think That little. English word has been turned into that. Mm -hmm. But at the time this was translated, and still you go to the dictionary and check it out, it's exactly what despise means that you, you, you despise that, or you don't think it has any value. Don't, it's valueless. Don't value it. And so it ain't worth spending any money on. Um, well, like that pastor's wife said to uh, Willie George that time, Brother Willie, you're a good preacher. When are you going to quit that children's ministry and, and come on into the real ministry? If there is a real ministry, if there is a first place ministry, it's the children, not the adults. Mm -hmm. the, Jesus put the children first. God put the children first. He chose Abraham because he would teach his children. Now, because he would teach, it goes on to say, maybe we can read this later, but in Deuteronomy, it goes on to say what he taught. And that was that he would teach his commands to love the Lord your God with all your heart yes, and soul your mind. So it's what he would teach them about God and that he would teach them when you come in, when you go out, when you get up, when you sit down. Over and over again, the New Living says, it's serious. And these people here, when Jesus was on the earth, they were not teaching that. They weren't doing that. They were teaching the law. You don't do this and you don't do that. And if you do, God will kill you and all that kind they of stuff. They weren't teaching the ways of God. They didn't teach the love of God either. Mm -hmm. Jesus came preaching that. 
Now, here is a principle. To improve anything, to set a higher standard, I don't, care, I don't care what it is. If you're going to improve your life, if you're going to do anything, it takes four things to do it. Number one is prayer. Jesus talked about these things. Prayer, time, effort, and money. If you don't spend the time in prayer and find out the will of God, if you, don't, if you, if you refuse to put any time to it, or you're going to just turn it over to somebody else, or if you won't put forth the effort. This is the opposite from despise. This is something that has some value. I'm going to put some time praying over this. I'm going to put some, I'm going to put some time in it. I'm going to put some effort in it, and I'm going to put whatever it takes in there. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to sow seed towards it. I'm going to take a stand on this because my children are worth this to me. But whether it's your own ministry, your church, or whatever it is, you can't do it without those four things. And before the devil or your own ideas put in an excuse about any of those things, you have to realize you're not alone. God's your partner in every one of those areas. That's so big, Kelly. I'm it glad is. you brought that up. Because the first thing is, well, I just don't have time. I'm a working mother. I'm single. That's blah, where blah. the prayer comes about. That's where prayer. God's your partner <clears throat> in your own labor, Romans 8, in all those things. That is so good. Uh, here, here's, here, here's, here's another part of it. I'm tired. I don't have time. I and da, 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 whatever money. it is. I don't have the money. See, those are not, those are just excuses. Mm -hmm. Because you make time to do other things. You make time to do what you want to do. Talking about despising, Dad, I mean, it's, I, and please don't get like I'm trying to get on to make you feel guilty for something I haven't learned myself. But many people take the time for their kids to do sports on Wednesday and Sundays, but don't take the time to even get them in church yeah. on the, at those times. But they'll, boy, they'll pour out the effort in that. And the money. And the money. <sighs> um, so you, if it, that's, you can do that if you despise the value of getting the word into your kids. That Talk has about to that, come, Kelly. That has you, to you, come up in your God heart. taught you that. I, I saw something that, frankly, had, had never, never occurred to me. I, I didn't even know. I didn't even, I didn't understand that this level, this, this word level, and how to raise up a child, how to correct a child. And the word is very explicit about it. And the word is explicit about how to spank a child, not beat one, and, and you do it with God's help. You do it, like you said, you don't, your do, partner. you don't do any of this without seeking out the Word first and finding out how and follow it explicitly. I never heard of a young man having difficulties being pressured and pushed by the devil over things he ought not be watching on the internet and all of that. And, and uh, I, I, I never heard of this. For a young man like Max, Kelly's number four child, raised and taught from the Word concerning correction and all of these things, goes in and brings you the spanking spoon. <laughs> I believe it was a wooden spoon, right? According, and that's according to the Word. It doesn't, doesn't say anything in there about whipping a child with a belt or a whip or something like that. No, 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 no. And so, yeah, read. And so, he, and he brought it in and he said, Mama, I need you to spank me because I know it'll purify me. I need you to help me. I need you to correct me. And I need help to get this out of my life. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> But, but that young man today, I'm telling you, that young man graduated from Bible school on two different levels 
And then after he graduated from Bible school, then he goes and enrolls in Oral Roberts University because he's following the voice of the Spirit of God in developing himself to walk in his calling. This wasn't Kelly's idea and you tell you you're going to school over here and you go, no, 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 no. He sought God out in these areas. Each he's year. following the Word of God. He's hearing, he's listening, he's, he's saying what God is saying. He's following the plan and developing and God takes care of him financially. He takes care of him in all, all his ways and he's just a young man. I didn't even know that was available. Talk about that, Kay. I, I want to know. I want to know more about it. Well, in the sense that, like, we're overall, we're talking about teaching your children the Word and and bringing them up to maturity in the things of God. But um, and the Lord told me when I was very young and young mother talked to me about that my job. And it's important that you know purpose. This is what you get when you pray. When you pray over these things, you pray over your children, you pray about how to teach them, you find purpose, you find kingdom value, not worldly value and what the world places value on, but you find what does God value? Because the word talks about living to please God and I wanted my children to, it, this is not about perfection. There's not one thing in this word that is about our perfection in ourselves. Well, and to we you find perfection in the law and liberty. You didn't, you didn't put demands on them. You taught them the grace of God and all of them are in the ministry today they and all of the them Lord. so happy and so, and walking in the things of the Lord and they, 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 but they learned early on how to seek God's plan and follow it. And it's a heart that thing. That is so big, Kelly. That's where all the joy is, mm -hmm. it, is finding out what God's called you to do. And I've heard Christian people say this. Now, baby, now you're smart and, and you're, you know, uh, we live in a free country and that's wonderful. That's good. That's true. And you can just be anything you want to be. Wrong. Mm -hmm. not if, not, you, can't be a, you can't be a disciple of Jesus Christ and teach that to your children. And that's part of the training that you do with them is it's always about what does the Lord want. That's what they need to hear from you that, I mean, about your life. When you make decisions, I saw y'all base your decisions on what the Lord wanted, not what looked possible, not what looked easy, but what did the Lord want. The and grace place. Yes, yes and living amen. to please the Lord was part, as I prayed over um, the children and how to discipline them and I was learning, you know, and by the time I had Max, you know, I, I learned something. I knew some things. And I early on began disciplining him with the idea of his repentance, not to discipline him because he did something wrong. But, but it became for me more of a heart issue that I was after with Max. I yeah. mean, I understood. Yeah. It was always, I was understanding what I was doing. And the Lord began to teach me, my job as a parent is to build a tabernacle to build a house for the Lord, where the Lord is welcome, the Lord is first place, the Lord is, this is, he's worshiped here. He's, you know, Romans 12 expresses it to me that mm -hmm. he, that, that my life, not just my body, but my life, my fleshly living daily, go about my yeah. business life is a living sacrifice and it's meant to please God. This is what I do. And, um, this idea of pleasing God, Kelly, let's, let's talk about that a minute. Because a lot, of, a lot of Christian people are afraid of that. That oh, if I just do what pleases God, there ain't no telling what he's liable to do to me. There ain't no telling where he's liable to send me. Wait a minute. Back up, darling. The Apostle Paul wrote to his spiritual son, Timothy, and he said, God richly gives us all things he gives us all things richly to enjoy. Now, my question is, does he give you things to meet your needs? Well, yeah. No, that's wrong. He gives you things to enjoy and they meet your needs. Mm -hmm. His purpose in giving it is for your enjoyment. To bring joy mm -hmm. to your life. Glory we to God. We can trust him. 
And, but now if people, all people ever heard was the law, mm -hmm. they don't know that and don't believe it. So they're, they're afraid to pray. I'm yours to command. Uh, I'm your voice. I'll, I'll say what I hear you say and so forth. They ain't no telling what he's liable to do. No, 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 baby. He loves you. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You Amen. can trust the Father. You can trust him. You really can. And That's you can what you trust him with your children. That's what you were teaching them, wasn't it? It's what I was teaching them. And the funny thing about Super Kid Academy, Daddy, is, you know, you just, this is where prayer, you get understanding later about what God's doing. But with Super Kid Academy, it was like, okay, this sounds like a great idea. We'll do this. And the kids will go along. They'll have them, they'll learn they have a mission. They'll learn they have a place in God. And, and what happened was kids began to be compelled to do what God's called them to do. I had no idea that was going to be an effect, but that began to be a part of what I was training the ch my own children in is what does God say about it? Looking in the word, you know, there's a, I wrote, I came, when I was getting ready for all of this, I came across some, I love Psalm 119. It's very long, but <laughs> there's so much power in oh. there about the word of God. You know, in Psalm 119, it, it says, oh, that my actions would consistently reflect your decrees. And it says that there's no shame. And it talks about comparing my life with your commands. Now, I saw that scripture later, but what, I, what the Lord led me to do is like with Max. I remember one day, because I would always talk to him about repentance. And when I disciplined him, I didn't do him three if it was this bad and five if it was really bad. I really began to discipline him based on his own repentance. Like if he's running all around the room and he's yelling and screaming, and he's mad at me, he didn't repent. The Lord began to let me recognize when he, his heart had a change. And the second his heart changed, because you can tell when they cry, you can tell by the spirit. Oh, yeah. When you're believing God to be able to tell, you can tell. One time I was disciplining him and I stopped and it was, it, it had this feeling to me of stopping in the middle of a sentence and where like someone's talking and they stop in the middle and you're like, do you need me to finish this sentence for you? I, I know what you're going to say, <laughs> but, um, it had that feeling too, but I stopped and Max looked up to me and he goes, I think I need one more. And I said, I think <laughs> oh. you do too. And I, I and people that might say, what? you gave him another. I'm like, yes, because discipline, the rod is to drive foolishness out. If Max begins to recognize when the foolishness is there, then we're about purpose. One can put a thousand to fly, two can put 10,000 to fly. If I got me and Max or, Emma or anybody else in the same vein with me, believing God that what he said in the word would work. Now, it's not just me trying to teach my kids something. It's not just me and Max trying to do something. You got me, Max, and God partnering together to drive foolishness out because foolishness in itself just means you've turned your back on wisdom. It's not ignorance. It's not stupidity. An ignorant person doesn't know what God says, but someone who's been offered the wisdom of God through here from a teacher, from a Sunday school teacher, from a parent, they've been, been offered rejected. it and you turn your back yeah, yeah, on it. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, foolishness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what the Bible says that foolishness of a man, and we're not talking a kid. The word says the rod would drive that out far, but the foolishness of a man twists his way. So if you don't get that out, that word twist is, um, translated in other places, wicked. Mm -hmm. It comes from we get our word wicker mm -hmm. from it because it means to twist. His wicked ways, a man should turn from his twisted ways. But here you're talking about a young, a young child knowing the difference. Knowing that he just wasn't, his heart was not right yet. And afterwards, after a discipline time, I would say, now you see how that, you're clean with the Lord. You, you see how that sense of inside, there's nothing there between you and God. And I would always point that out when they, when they were very little. And so he began to recognize what that felt like to be grievous to the Holy Spirit and what it felt like to be clean and clear. And um, so- You know, that, that gave him 
that gave him um, a, a line to know what rebellion would do to you because he had, he had something else to refer to. He had a value that had been pointed out and taught him what it meant to be right on the inside. Mm -hmm. And a child that doesn't know that comes up and goes for years without ever, without ever having that to some miraculous day he gets born again and then he thinks, wow, is this, that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I was in my mid-20s when that happened because that spirit took me over when I was nine. And that's what we're learning how to avoid mm -hmm. and we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs>